public property um, that was purchased for public funds for the replacement of the new bridge. As far as cost estimates, um, depending on which alignment you look at, you're looking at anywhere from 1.5 million to 3 million. If you stay closer to this alignment, you're going to be 1.5. If you start looking at other alignments where you have to build a lot of approach roadway, you're going to start uh, approaching the uh, 3 million dollar mark. If FEMA kicks in, what could we see? Well, typically, whenever FEMA, whenever a de disaster declaration is made, typically their participation is 75% of the cost for the repairs are paid by FEMA, 15% is paid by the state, and then 10% is paid by uh, the local authority. In this case, it would be older special ordinance. Um, I got a question. Oh, On the anybody from the county here? We're from Ozark Special and then Ray Waiters over okay. there. Okay. Well, the CAFAR report, Com Comprehensive Annual Report, are y'all familiar with it for the county? No. Ask the county administrator about it. It's uh, over $138 million in there, and it's set on Wall Street, you know, it's making money. They never tell us about the CAFAR, but they tell us they're going to raise our taxes. But the CAFAR is a real thing. It's a comprehensive annual report form. Look it up online and you see some videos about it and it'll blow your mind. They tell us that Detroit is bankrupt. De Detroit and their CAFAR report has $4 billion. So y'all look it up. Okay. Um, you guys talked a little bit about the impact on the community from this being closed. Can you expand on you know the impact on the community? I don't have the data fresh. It was, uh, I, I, I can just simply say that if someone approaches the bridge from either end to realize that it's closed, if you take an alternate route to get to the other end of that bridge, it's about a 17 minute travel. So the economic impact, I, uh, I don't remember what those numbers were, but it was, it was millions of dollars on an annual basis. If I believe that's right. And, uh, uh, you know, we had addressed that a couple of years ago, and I'm sorry that data's not fresh, but um, it, it's significant because you've got people that live on the north side of the bridge who would always travel to the south and go get something to eat or go run to Walmart, and by the time you go around, you, you could be in Springfield at the same time, and, and there were ways to, to track that, so... What's the possibility of saving the old bridge for a walk? A walk, a walk uh, well, I, you know, I'm, I grew up here, a lot of us did, and, and the old bridge means a lot to us. And it's something that we don't, we certainly don't take lightly. Um, I think that the, you know, the opportunity is there if there's a group that wants to try to, to preserve the bridge. I don't see it happening in its current location. It's not a matter of running a new bridge and an old bridge parallel because you run the risk of this one getting hit again and then going down and wiping out the new bridge. So if it's a relocation or some type of effort like that, uh, it's not really up to those our special road district to, to provide for the care and the feeding of, a, of a, a, an unused bridge into the future. but. Uh, that opportunity is certainly there if, if somebody wanted to take it over. Now, have you guys looked at other bridges in the county? There was a lot of significant damage. What did you find from those? That I can't really speak to. Um, Bert would need yeah, to. We've inspected all the uh, any of the bridges along the flood, you know, the flood area that went through there. The Green Bridge, this bridge, Mill Pond Bridge, all the way down to Cassville. And we've inspected all those and, and did find any significant findings. So this one's the worst? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, this is the worst. One thing for Spencer, you was talking about the FEMA cost share to repair the bridge. It's been my understanding with MoDOT and possibly with you that this bridge is not repairable. Is that right? It's, I mean, it's repairable. It's just how much money does it cost to repair it. And then what kind of life can you get out of it? Um, 
I just want to clarify that. Yeah, so that, that's, that's the struggle. And so once we have had a chance to evaluate the report, I think we're going to see that the cost to do those repairs are going to exceed the funds that are currently available. Um, and then we need, and we know our target has always been looking at a long-term solution. So are we better off to spend those monies towards a long-term solution versus a short-term repair when we're already faced with uh, funding shortfall? Now, at what point would FEMA decide to spend the money for a new bridge versus repair? What they what they typically want to do is they want to go through and do um, just to put it back in the condition that it was in before. But once we sh once we can demonstrate that the cost to make those repairs versus the cost of a more permanent solution that would reduce the potential for future damages or future closures, they would evaluate that on a benefit cost uh, basis and then make the decision to go ahead and, and work with a more long-term solution.